Hello and welcome to Toggle.io. In this video, you are going to see how to get started with our platform. On Toggle.io, you can connect your IoT devices and build dashboards like this one to display device data. Before I show you how to do this, let's take a look at the documentation. On Toggle.io, we can access resources like Getting Started as well as the API documentation. To see tutorials on all of the available features and to engage with our community of developers, visit community.tago.io, where you can read and post questions in the related channels. Remember that you can access all of our documentation at any time within the Help Center on Admin. This is Admin. Here you can access and create dashboards. Above dashboards is a menu of admin features. I will briefly cover a number of these to help you get started. To send data to Talgo, we first need to have a device. To create a device, go to Devices and click Add Device. By default, for each device created, a bucket is created with the same name that holds all of the device's data. Each device also has a unique token that can be used to identify that device when sending payloads using our API. To send data to Talgo through this device using our API, we can go to api.docs.talgo.io and open Postman. In Postman, choose Post as the address and post to api.tago.io slash data. Then in headers, enter the authorization in the key field and paste the device token for the authorization value. In body, select text and choose JSON, then enter the payload in JSON format. This is the required format for all payloads sent to Tago.io but you can also send raw payloads and convert them to JSON later using the payload parser. After sending your payload, if it was successfully added to the device bucket, you will receive this response. Here is a list of fields you can send. Note that variable is the only required field. After adding our device, we can view the device traffic using the live inspector to verify the connection. When payloads are sent to Tago, any variables within them are automatically added to the device bucket. We can view the variables by going to Buckets and then Variables. Here we can confirm that the variable temperature has been created and added to our bucket. To view and visualize this variable, we can create a dashboard. I'm going to add a card widget and I'm going to add color conditions that will change the color of the widget's chart depending on the value of the variable. In edit mode, you can move and resize your widgets. Now when I send new payloads through Postman, the changes are reflected in my dashboard. Next we can create an action that is triggered based on the value of the temperature variable. Be sure to take advantage of our quick start feature, which will help you to get affiliated with our platform. When adding an action, you need to choose what will trigger it. In our case, it will be triggered based on the value of the temperature variable, and the result of the action will be a push notification to my account. It is also a good idea to create an unlock condition, as this will prevent your action from triggering continuously. In this case, I'm creating an action that will be triggered when the temperature variable exceeds the value 80, and this action will only be unlocked again once the variable has dropped below 60. This way, if I had a device that had overheated, I would only receive one notification alerting me to this fact, and I would only receive a second notification if the device had first cooled down before overheating a second time. I will demonstrate this using Postman. Now 
Notice that as the device continues to overheat, it does not produce subsequent notifications. Not until the temperature falls below the unlock condition I set for it. Now that we have a device and a dashboard, we can distribute our IoT solution to end users, which we call run users. To create a run application, go to run and choose a domain name. You can use a custom domain name by going to your profile and upgrading your plan. In most cases, run users will sign up to your application on the signup page, but in this case, I will manually add a run user in user management. After adding this user, I can create a policy that gives this user access to my new dashboard. This policy is targeted specifically to this particular user. Make sure to explore our videos and documentation to learn how to create more comprehensive run policies. You can download the Tago Run app on the Apple and Google Play stores. Now, as the end user, all I would need to do is access a run app, enter the domain name, and sign in with my credentials. That's all for this video on getting started with Tago. For more information, visit tago.io.